Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining with me for Friendship Blessing Church's Wednesday evening Bible study. The day after the 4th of July, so I hope you had an awesome Independence Day. Today is July 5th. Um, so, um, wow, we've <laughs> it's kind of been a crazy week I, uh, with the 4th of July and everything. So I thought I'd give you a heads up here. We ended up this afternoon, uh, evening, uh, th this afternoon, canceling our in-house uh, evening service. We uh, we've had multiple projects going despite the uh, uh, the holiday this week. So I thought I'd show you a picture and one of those projects. Uh, our team is moving at fast pace for uh, vacation Bible school, and, uh, and so we've got that going on. They were working with some of those things today. And we are in the middle of a building project, building an outside pavilion. And today the concrete floor needed to be laid. And when you do that, you have to do the whole thing. You can't stop. So, so in light of that and some of the other Wednesday evening students were here, in-house students, and we decided together that I would do just the online what I have of it. So we're going to have a little shortened version of that this evening heads up about that too and what a story here about deborah um the the uh the judge and so um but we're not gonna i've told you our goal on wednesday night is for all of us to learn how to study and to to get your appetite wet for being in the word of god and so this is going to be one of those evenings where um you're going to have to uh dig uh, beyond what I'm able to come up with for you this evening, but we're in the book of Judges. That's why I mentioned Deborah. So uh, we're not going to uh, get to unpack that story completely. It's a 10-week study. Um, next week, we are not having in-house or online because it's our vacation Bible school and we usually set aside Adult Wednesday night for our vacation Bible school. So we're doing that. And uh, and then there's another evening. I think it's August 16th that we won't be on online or in-house as well. So thank you for being with me online this evening. Before we get started, let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. It's been a busy week in a lot of ways. We thank you, uh, Father, for uh, our freedom. And for the freedom, the freedom to gather together this evening in this way, um, different places. Um, some of some are far away from where I am in this moment, and we're grateful through technology to be able to study your word together. So, Father, uh, be with us this evening by the power of your Spirit. Lead us in your word that we would know you better. We pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. So let's see how far we get. So. Uh, the reading this week, this is another adjustment I have to make with you. So your homework was observation, interpretation, application of Judges 5. But last week, we didn't get to De Deborah in Judges 4. And so I think I gave you a heads up that we would be dealing with Deborah this week. And after all that, now we're not going to get to chapter five. <laughs> so thank you for your patience and love for God's word. I'll just remind you again, if you're new with us this evening, you can go to YouTube Friendship Blessing and check out our other Bible studies, in particular, the first one that I did two weeks ago, which gave the introduction to uh, judges. So I do want to just once again, the Bible Project timeline is going to look just like last week. I've highlighted this area because last week we dealt with Athnel, Ehud, and Shamgar, which is actually, it's only one verse, remember, um, and is not in this timeline, but Deborah is. So I thought I'd show it to you again and th then do the blow up of, and you know, the the story in this text that's that's catches everybody's attention is the one is the disturbing part to this Jael says Sarah we'll get to that in just a few moments I, I'll unpack that we're going to unpack a little bit of that not all of that I, my goal was to get to that this evening but 
we're uh, we're not going to be able to unpack that piece like I wanted. But so I want to read a little bit um, from uh, uh, Judges chapter four, verses one through ten. So your homework was chapter five, but we needed to start from chapter four. So let me let me read some of this for you. And the first thing I want to point out. Uh, go back to a slide that we had already, um, Israel's cycle of sin. So let me read verse one, and you keep this in mind. Here we go again. What is this? Is this the fourth time I think we're on this cycle of sin? Uh, and, the, and I highlighted the first word of chapter four, verse one, again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And so here we go again, Israel falls into sin and idolatry, um, and Israel is going to be oppressed. So uh, uh, now that Ehud was dead, the last judge, so the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. Sisera, the commander of his army, was based in Herosheth. So you you need to like these names. I'm reading them because they're going to be important in a few a few moments. Hegoim, uh, because he had 900 chariots fitted with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years, cried out to the Lord for help. So here we go again. Already in these verses, we have sin and idolatry. Israel's oppressed. Israel cries out to the Lord. Verse four, now God, now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel at that time. So we've got a we've got Deborah who's a prophet, not just a judge, and she's leading uh Israel. She had held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadosh and Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali. Now, let me just pause here and say, I think you get this whole idea of the cycle of sin. Um, and then, so when I get to, um, <clears throat> we're going to jump over to the end of chapter four in just a moment. Um, you'll have this image in mind, but I don't like leaving up the graphics too long. <clears throat> the Lord God of Israel, verse six, uh, commands you go take with you 10,000 men of Nephtali and Zebulun and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River and give him into your hands. Barak said to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. So Deborah's a pretty powerful leader. Even Barak does not want to go without Deborah. Certainly I will go with you, said Deborah. But because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours. For the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. There Barak summoned Zebulun and Ephtali and 10,000 men went up under his command. Deborah also went up with him. Now, <clears throat> so um, I, in my, you know, my thought was, here we go again with uh, the cycle of sin. And I just want to point out to you that whole cycle. And now we've got uh, Israel being raised up as a judge as a deliverer, for, if you will, for Israel. And once again, what we have here is um, the depravity of people and, and the mercy of God. And that's why I say, if you really read like the whole book of Judges, the Old Testament, you begin to realize the problem was us, not God, and that God continues to be patient and merciful with our depravity, with our uh, wickedness. Uh, verse two, the Lord sold them into the hands of, and you know, I thought to myself, like we look at something like that and you know, you think, well, you know, God's putting them into a bad circumstance, but how often have you gone through something difficult and grown because of it or changed because of it? And so 
I think like in this situation too, this is for their good. So it looks like a bad thing, but it's for their good. Remember uh, when I read in this text, what happens when the, when the people now, in this case, it took 20 years. It took 20 years, but it caused them to cry out to God, to the Lord. And that's, that's God's goal, right? For us to depend on him and to turn to him. That's why it's so important to see these stories and for uh, followers of Jesus, primarily and above me, I to realize that um, our relationship to God is of number one importance and then be able to share that with others, people who aren't believers and all that relationship with God is of the utmost importance. And, uh, and I made note, it's amazing how crisis causes people to seek God. And once again, though, in this case, 20 years. So sometimes we're stubborn, right? So I want to show to you that detailed page I had. Now I've got Deborah highlighted. So if this is your first night, you won't recognize this. But um, this uh, I've been highlighting our judges as we move along. This has details. So we read, you know, in chapter four, verse three, that um, that uh, it took 20 years. That's why I mentioned a moment ago. If you go over to chapter five, I think I said chapter four, but chapter five, verse 31, um, it, and look at the last line. It says, the land had peace for 40 years. So here we are, 40 years, okay, which equals 60 years. So 20 years of oppression, they cry out to God, and Deborah is their judge and leader uh, at the time. So I, that's why I really like that that detail page. So Deborah, now she's we've we we brought her into the text. Um, she was leading at the time as a prophet. Here's here's some interesting. I found this graphic that I thought would be helpful tonight as well. Um, interesting things about Deborah, Judges 4 through 5. Deborah is the only female judge mentioned in the Bible. Uh, and in that, that text I read, you could see she, uh, she led Israel in having their disputes resolved and finding God's will. So she had authority in civil and religious affairs. She's called a prophetess, the same role that Mary Moses' sister had in Exodus 15, 20. A whole chapter in the book of Judges is dedicated to Deborah's song. That's the chapter we were going to get to. We did, we're not going to. Of praise to God after he gave Israel victory over the enemy. Deborah and Samuel were the only two Bible figures designated as both prophet and judge. And some scholars dispute whether Samuel was actually a judge or not, but um, that that was in another study. Deborah is a great example of courage, obedience, and faithfulness. And so just a few interesting facts. Speaking of Deborah as a prophet, there are there are four other female prophets mentioned in the Bible. I don't know if you remember this or not, but Miriam, then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, Moses' sister, Exodus 15, 20. Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam, Akbor, Shaphan, and Isaiah went to speak to the prophet Huldah, 2 Kings 22, 14. When I was in Bible school, I actually knew a Huldah. So uh, Huldah was a female prophet. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, Luke 2, 36, and in Acts 21, eight through nine, leaving the next day where he Caesarea and stayed at the house of Philip, the evangelist, one of the seven. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. So just accounts for you of women in the Bible who were prophets. I thought that was appropriate here with Deborah. So just quickly, you know, I've mentioned already that the disturbing piece to this text is uh Jael. And let me read a little bit of it. So if you jump, if you jump to verse 17 of chapter four, um, and let me just I'm gonna read a little bit of it 
because this is the piece I wanted to, you know, uh, for us to really dig into, and we're not going to get to tonight. So I want to make sure that I brought it up. That's Sisera. This is Jael. I think I'll just give you a few of the interesting facts and then read a little bit of it for you. Um, so women in this context, in this per time period in the Bible, would have had their own tent separate from their husbands. So for a man to go in Jael's tent, uh, first of all, he probably would have thought better place to hide than in one of the men's tent or her husband's tent. And this is interesting. Women were responsible. So if you thought you read this and thought, I, you know, I thought to myself, I read this, who would have had steady enough hand, a man or a woman, steady enough hand to do this deed, this driving the tent peg. Um, and this, uh, I found out that in that time period, women were responsible for setting up the tent. So Jael would have been very good at driving a tent peg. And so um, even without reading some of the text, you can see that, um, that, uh, Sisera, the commander of Jabal's army, is going to be handed to this uh, woman, Giles. So verse 17, oh, let's see here. Uh, chapter 4, verse 17. Actually, let me pick it up. Well, the, no, verse 17 is a good place. Sisera, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jael. So I meant to kind of unpack for you. So Barak, we're going to talk about this in a minute, but Barak wins the day. We'll do. We'll look at that in a minute. And after Barak, with his ten thousand men, is winning, Sisera, the commander of the Canaanite army, flees on foot and goes into Jael's tent. Uh, so that's where verse seventeen. Sisera, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite, because there was an alliance between Jabin, king of Hazor and the family of Heber the Kenite. So they they had a, that would have been another deceiving thing. And we this is a lot we could have dug on. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, come my Lord, come right in, don't be afraid. So he entered her tent. She covered him with a blanket. I'm thirsty, he said, please give me some water. She opened a skin of milk and gave him a drink and covered him up. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. If someone comes by and asks you, is anyone there? Say no. But Jael, Haber's wife, picked up a tin peg and a hammer and went quietly to him while he lay asleep, exhausted. And she uh, uh, she kills him. And, and of course, uh, and that goes back to what um, uh, Deborah was saying to uh, Barack and that um, um, a woman would... Uh, take the victories kind of sort of from from Barack. And so once again, that piece, a lot of people zero in on that little story, you're going to have to, and, and we'll unpack a little bit in two weeks on the July 19th when we're back together. We'll unpack that story. But remember I said that a lot of judges um, is disturbing. This is one of those stories um, in this text that we have tonight, it's the gory piece that's in there. But I wanted to, I did spend some time, I was trying to get to that piece of the story, and I spent some more time on actually Brock's faith, which is interesting. It might seem with uh, Deborah's kind of um, um, condemnation of Brock's apparent lack of willingness to do it himself um, and wants Deborah to go along. But there's there's obviously this place of faith for Barak as well. So backing up a little bit uh, in verse 15, remember I said he was um, he he was winning the day, right? So it's at Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisera, verse 15, chapter 4, and all his chariots and army by the sword, and Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot. That's where we see him. Um Fleeing, uh, fleeing, and so um, 
And matter of fact, I want to back up even further to verse 14, okay? Because I, I want to point something out here. Then Deborah said to Barak, go this is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands, actually Jael, into her hands. Uh, Barak wins against the uh, um, the 900 uh, chariots and, and the Canaanite men. But it's, has not the Lord gone ahead of you? So Barak went down Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. So he goes down Mount Tabor. He's got the high ground and he goes down Mount Tabor. So if you know anything about military maneuvers, going to the low ground wouldn't have been the best option. But uh, the reason I wanted to read verse 14, listen to who wins the day, right? At Brock's advance, the Lord routed Sisera. So, um, he, and you know, it made me think, we take credit for a lot of stuff that the Lord does for us, right? Because in this case, it's clear that the Lord uh, in that text routed Sisera and all his chariots. And so it's interesting because I got uh, I got to reading about this moment and that word routed took me um, and I've you know I've said about I love to dig deeper on Greek because it always leads to these treasures in Hebrew in my experience not so much sometimes seems to be a simpler language than Greek but here I found a treasure in this uh, in this verse fifteen that uh, the Lord routed right. The Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots. So if you look at what the Hebrew words, let's make sure I don't say Greek because we're in the Old Testament now, right? If I did say Greek, I apologize because the Old Testament's Hebrew. So this word, right? So routed. Um. I think in English, and I could have done that, like going over to Webster's, gotten you that definition, but I think you'll get where I'm going. So we get this image in our mind of what routed means, but look at the Hebrew word, to make a noise, routed, a, a move noise, noisily, to confuse, to discomfit. By the way, some translations, King James Version, I think, uses that word. I, I'm not sure I've encountered that word before. Maybe you have. Very interesting word. but. Um, so this word means something a little bit different than I had in my mind of routed. And it's interesting because when I looked at other translations, they actually tried to bring that in. And the Lord struck a terror in the Sisera. So the routed here is struck a terror. And I'm going to show you something from the Old Testament will help you understand better. Okay, here's the ERV and KJV has this. And the Lord discomfited. Sisera. All these are different ways to translate that Hebrew word for routed. And during the battle, the Lord confused Sisera. So, um, oh, and uh, oh, I didn't want to show you that just yet. So, um, the all of these are different ways to translate the word um, routed. So you can see there's like some, to, to me, our word routed, it just didn't fit, right? And so then I realized through deeper digging that the same word routed is used in Exodus 14, 24. Remember when they were caught between Pharaoh's army of fleeing Egypt and the Red Sea? Uh, look at uh, Exodus 14, 24 here at that moment. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down for the pillar of fire cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. That's the same Hebrew word that we have here for um, routed. Uh, our New International Version that I, I read to you, verse 15, at Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots. So it's the same word used for what happened at the Exodus to throw into confusion. I actually think, so my, I've come away from this, like uh, routed is probably not the best way. But remember, my point here is the Lord did the work. Barak did something, right? And this is just my interpretation. So now I want to give you a little application, right? 
Brock, I, I really believe, exhibited faith here. And what I mean is because he went down Mount Tabor and into the battle. He followed Deborah's commands, her orders to do so. Um, and so Barack actually stepped out in faith, right? Especially to to put your troops into that kind of a going down into the low ground. Um, it probably would have been a lot more comfortable to just keep the high ground. He goes down in the low ground. Um, and so I thought to myself, what a what an act of faith. Um, it would have put him at a disadvantage. And so I think Barack exhibited faith there. And then when he took the step of faith, who won the battle? What does verse 15 say? The Lord threw Sisera's army into confusion or routed Sisera's army. The Lord did the work. So an application then becomes pretty simple, right? Which is we need to step out in faith. And as we step out in faith, then God provides the victory. So I don't know. Maybe the Lord had me come to this point because we're um, that's as far as I'm going to make it for you this evening. But um, maybe the Lord had me make it this far because today you're going through some particular battle. I think the step of faith, first of all, begins with prayer. Um, and then the Holy Spirit will give you guidance and direction as to how you step out in the faith. And then the Lord will win the battle for us. So let me close in a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for our opportunity opportunity this evening, even our short opportunity to be gathered together and to be challenged, Father, by our steps of faith when we're going through difficult times. And Lord, we're grateful for those moments. Uh, we don't want any ahead of us. We'd rather not to experience tough stuff and difficult times. But Father, we look back for those moments and you have been good and faithful, patient and kind with us, and we thank you for it. Father, I pray for anybody right now facing a particular battle that you will be with them this evening, that our moment in your word will cause your spirit to speak them, to them as they go in prayer, that you will reveal to them a step of faith and then give them the victory. Father, that they right now are praying for, I'm sure. Thank you for our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so two weeks from now, we will be together again. I'm trusting a full version of our time together. And we are going to be tackling chapter 6, 1 through 35. And I will not forget, I hope, I pray, you pray for me. I will also not forget to unpack a little bit more of the Deborah story, especially that kind of disturbing. It's not as disturbing as some of the stories in Judges, uh, Judges but that kind of disturbing story in the book of uh, Judges, if you're uh, in the, the text we were going through tonight. If you're a Friendship Wesley and you're in our area, you're attending Sunday morning, let me just throw a reminder out for you that it's one service, 10, 10 a.m. out under our new pavilion. We're looking forward to that, excited. We will be online live. My IT team has given me the green light. So if you're normally online on Sunday morning, please, um, and hopefully we can get cameras and everything just right that you can hear well and get a good view of what's going on with the dedication of our new pavilion and vacation Bible school that's starting up. God bless. Have a God week.